Right. Let's do it. I'm recruiting for a national firm. Do you want to know what? I told you I am just going to have him! I leave you with the ICC motto. We come in peace, we leave you in peace. Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1989 made-for-television drama, The Firm. Now, before I get into talking about this TV film, I want to give a shout-out to Seth for requesting this review. Thank you, Seth. Uh, if there is a film, a TV show, a anime, or a topic you'd like to see me discuss, feel free to check out the details in the video description. Now, The Firm is a made-for-television drama that deals with a group of soccer hooligans and... Uh, their conflict with one another and the fact that one faction wants to form a firm, which is a, a union of the two, and in order to make that a reality, it has to be created via violence, and in a lot of ways it's a scathing criticism of hyper masculinity and this idea of football who hooliganism uh in the uk something that is definitely not as prevalent here in the united states i don't know if there really is a, a connection between beating up on other men and sports other than sports that feature men beating up other men like boxing or ufc or the nfl in some ways but even in the nfl in american football you don't have this culture of men who spend time together at bars and hang out with one another and are essentially gangs they form their own factions and so on and so forth and then they play soccer on their spare time um the film was directed by Alan Clark, and I, for the most part, I thought he did an amazing job. The film has this very fly-in-the-wall look to it, and it's a very gritty-looking movie. It definitely feels like it's rooted deeply in reality. It, it, in a lot of ways, it has this documentary style and approach to it, which is really interesting, and I think it actually adds to the film in terms of its uh, overall impact, because it makes it feel all the more real. Um, but really where this film shines is with the screenplay by Al Hunter Ashton, which, like I said, I think it's a scathing criticism of this particular aspect of British culture. And it showcases how truly devastating and dangerous this obsession is for these men who become so connected to this group, to this bond, that it's absolutely uh, destructive. It's a destructive behavior becoming so attached to the idea of beating up on other men in order to get a thrill 
and to get some excitement in your life and also to feel a part of some kind of brood or some kind of uh, group. And it doesn't pull any punches. I was really surprised by how genuinely violent this film was for a TV movie. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as violent as some other things that I've seen, but for a TV movie, it's pretty, pretty brutal. I mean, a guy gets slashed in the face. Uh, there are, there's a sequence where a, a baby gets a hold of a knife and cuts his mouth. There is a, a blood. There's a, a few, quite a few bloody beatings. And, uh, then you have, uh, a relatively, uh, intense shootout which happens at one point uh near the end of the movie i wouldn't necessarily call it a shootout it's more like a surprise um bit of gunplay but despite how solid the script is in terms of really providing a spotlight and a glimpse on this very destructive side of um British culture and society the film really would not be as strong as it is without the immense presence of Gary Oldman Gary Oldman is unbelievably compelling in this as uh, Bex uh, this is one of his best performances of his career. Like, he is so on point. He's so charismatic. You can buy that there are these other men that gravitate around him because of how compelling and how powerful of, of a performance uh, this is for Gary Oldman. I mean... You're absolutely mesmerized by this character and by this portrayal. He's funny, he's witty, but he's also absolutely terrifying if you cross him and you don't really uh, do things the way that he wants you to. And you can see why people want to party with him and want to be on his good graces. And you can see why his wife, despite all this all these issues still wants to maintain somewhat of a relationship until finally she's fed up after he's become so obsessed with this idea of taking out this one guy from this rival faction that he forgets about anything else. He just becomes so zeroed in on it that he doesn't pay attention and his kid winds up cutting his mouth with one of his knives that he left lying around the house. And then when his wife confronts him later, he explodes. He's just like, I just have to have him. I have to have him. It's like, you, you just quit. Just stop it. It's like, I can't. I like the buzz. And, that, and that's so true. People like this, they love the buzz. They are addicted to the buzz of adrenaline that they get when they get in a situation where they are in a in a place of dominance over another man they get really worked up when it comes to beating up on other guys it's it's fucked up but there are a lot of instances and there's a lot of evidence to prove that that's a that's a real thing there are guys out there and the UK and probably in the US too, who are just addicted to that. It's like the the guys who go to bars just to fight. You know, that's their thing. They go to a bar and they just want to pick a fight with anyone because that's what they want that thrill. They want that buzz. And another thing that I liked about the script is that you had some characters here that you were somewhat sympathetic towards so it wasn't all just a bunch of villainous thugs uh you had bexy's wife which you really did sympathize with her because you could see that she's trying to make this work she's trying to get through to bex 
to get him to realize what he's losing and he's just he's just too far gone like there's even a moment where she's like why don't you just grow up uh stop being a hooligan i don't want to live with a 30 year old hooligan you know and that's not something that he's willing to let go of because he's too hooked on it he's too hooked on this identity that's all he is his identity is so firmly rooted in being a hooligan and being a leader of this group of men um, and being the, the head of this hooligan firm known as the ICC, the Inter-City inter Crew. And he wants to win this battle with this other uh, crew, um, with the rival gangs, the Buccaneers. So, the film mainly focuses on Gary Oldman. He's the main focus of the story, and for good reason. But you also have uh, Sue Bissell, who is uh, Bex's wife. You've got Sammy, who's the kid. You've got Yeti, who's the focus of his new obsession, because he wants to just take Yeti out and, and just kill him. Uh, you have Oboe who is this other guy who's uh, a figurehead for the Buccaneers. You've got Trig, you've got H, you've got Dominic, who is this young um, kid who's taken into the group, into the ICC. Uh, you've got Nunk, you've got Snowy, you've got Yusuf, you've got Simon, you've got Beef, you've got Billy, you've got JT, JT and you've got Stu. And so you have the ICC and you have the... Buccaneers and they get in this feud with one another like the Buccaneers they spray painted and uh, vandalized uh, Bexy's car and uh, they did this stunt where they drove uh, their car on the on the on the football field and they're just being all kinds of obnoxious and assholes and it escalates to the point where it gets really violent and it goes too far. And uh, uh, one of the members of the ICC has their car blown up by the Buccaneers. And they get in this brawl. And one of the newer members of the ICC, this young kid, gets cut slash in the face. And that eventually leads to Beck's... And a few other guys going over to uh, the house of one of the rival leaders, uh, Oboe, and cutting his face. And then it just, just continues to just boil and boil and boil until it finally explodes in, in the finale where Bexy, Bex is consumed by his obsession uh, to beat Yeti, and Yeti shoots him, dead. And the last shot of the the last few shots of the film are his crew at the bar talking about how, you know, they're gonna go overseas. They're you know they're gonna go to I think it's like Germany. They're gonna go to Europe. To Europe. They're gonna fight these other firms at this tournament, and they're gonna do it for the memory of their fallen leader, Bex. And the, the, the younger members of the gang who you think might have been disillusioned, who might have pushed away from it after what happened, no, now they're just, they are transfixed and they are absorbed in everything and uh, they are absolutely chomping at the bit to... Um, live up to Bex's legacy and, and continue this legacy of violence and hooliganism. So one other interesting thing about this movie is that it really doesn't have a score. There's no musical score, which at times I think it does hurt the film a little bit. I think it actually would have enhanced the movie in some aspects if you had a score, because it would have made some more emotional scenes a little stronger. It also would have helped some of the brawl scenes and some of the sequences involving fights or or, or violence. 
have a little bit more punch to them because the way it is, it just kind of is just kinda, it's just a little flat because of the lack of a of a score. And when it comes to other technical aspects, I mean the cinematography by Ben Philpot, uh, Richard Philpot, and John Ward, it's adequate. But this isn't really the kind of film that I think cinematography is really the main selling point. Uh, and the editing by John Strickland is also serviceable enough. The fact that it's only 70 minutes is a huge plus because it goes by at a pretty good pace as a result. It doesn't really feel like it's too long or it's too boring. Uh, I think if it was any longer... I don't think it would have worked as well because it just wouldn't have been as interesting uh, throughout because a lot of it is just very simple. It's this idea of Bex and the ICC trying to form this firm, but then the Buccaneers aren't having any of it. So it starts this feud and then you're dealing with Bex becoming more and more detached from re reality and more and more, obsessed and, and controlled by this fuel I mean fuel is not the right word controlled by this desire for violence and uh, dominance over uh, Yeti and, and the Buccaneers so it's not really one of those films that's that complex but like I said, it has this almost documentary-like quality to it at times that makes it definitely stick with you because of just how real and raw a lot of things feel. And the cast was just great. Gary Oldman, once again, I, I cannot sing his praises enough. If there is any reason for you to see this, even if it doesn't sound interesting to you, it's him. Like, if you really like Gary Oldman and you're a fan of his, you owe it to yourself to watch this movie at least once. Uh, Leslie Manville is his wife. I thought she did a great job as well. Um, the rest of the cast was fine. I mean, Phil Davis is Yeti, played a good antagonist, a guy you definitely wanted to see get his uh, comeuppance and get his ass kicked. Uh, same goes for Andrew Wilde as Oboe. Uh, the rest of the gang, you know, Charles Lawson is Trig, William Vanderpew is uh, H, Jay Simpson is Dominic. Um, all of these actors, I think, did a great job portraying this group of guys who have formed this bond over a certain amount of time around this idea of being a, a football hooligan. And they are really close to one another they have their own chance they have their own uh in jokes and i just felt the entire cast on both sides on the side of the buccaneers and the icc they had a believable bond with one another like it, it didn't feel like they were trying too hard or it was an act it actually felt very genuine and that also once again helped the film feel more real because of how committed these actors were and, and how they managed to build some genuine chemistry with one another. So I don't really know what else to say about the firm, except for what it was, I liked it. I thought it was a, a, a fairly compelling movie. Uh, and it was an interesting look into a, part of a culture and a part of a society that I'm not familiar with as someone who lives in the United States. So it was very refreshing and interesting to see this, this, uh, glimpse of, uh, of a slice of life, uh, in, in, uh, the UK and, uh, Gary Oldman. I mean, it's just stupendous, just a force of nature in this film. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching my review, and as always, I'll see you later. See ya.